Malalaman ninyo ang katotohanan, ang katotohanan ang magpapalaya sa inyo. I am not the healer. Jesus Christ living in me is the healer. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Kung hindi siya magdududa sa kanyang puso, sa halip, bagkos, mananampalataya siya ng sinasabi ng kanyang bibig ay mangyayari. In living in the last days, you have to ensure your eternity. Prepare for eternity. Hallelujah! Everybody read, You shall fear the Lord your God and serve Him and shall take oaths in His name. Everybody say, Fear the Lord. Fear God. Fear the Lord. Fear God. You know, if only all people all over the world have that fear of the Lord, we can never see wars Violence, terrorism, uh, injustices, corruption, poverty, we can never see. We can never experience that. This earth will be heavenly. But even among people of God, many people of God claim that they love God, but many of them do not have genuine fear of the Lord. But anyway... What do you mean by fear of the Lord? The dictionary defines fear of the Lord as reverential fear. In Tagalog, banal na takot sa Diyos. Everybody say reverential fear. Sa Tagalog, banal na takot sa Diyos. Why do we need to have fear of the Lord? Or what are the benefits of of fear of the Lord. Number one that I would like to uh, share is uh, fear of the Lord shields us from the power of sin. Fear of the Lord shields us from the power of sin. We all know that once we live in sin, we are actually driving away the presence of God. We know what happened when Adam and Eve fell into sin. The sweet fellowship of Adam and Eve with God suddenly cut off because of sin. And we all know that the Holy God cannot have fellowship with sinning people. That's why in the Bible, if we have fear of the Lord, we must have hate sin. Now, I remember uh, the, 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 in the life of Joseph. Do you know why God fell in love with Joseph in Genesis chapter 39? We all know that Joseph was uh, sold by his brothers as a slave to Ismaelites. And uh, Putipar, the chief commanding officer of the so-called Pharaoh's Presidential Security Command, with a version today of Presidential Security Command, uh, bought Joseph as a slave. But when Putipar saw Joseph is a man walking with God because the hands of God were obviously on the life of Joseph, Putipar promoted Joseph not just to be a slave, but even to be the managing director or general manager of his entire resources. But one time, the wife of Putipar got uh, a delirious crush, <laughs> a delirious crush on Joseph. And we can see in Genesis 39, beginning verse 7, or uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, verse 6, so he left in Joseph's care everything he had. Putipar left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Oh, by the way, I want to read verse 5. This is a lesson not only to many uh, OFWs, 
but even to the employers of OFWs. In verse 5 of Genesis 39, there is a revelation here. From the time he put him, from the time he, referring to Putipar, put Joseph in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. When a genuine man or woman of God is working for someone, that someone, although he is or she is an unbeliever of God, will be blessed for the sake of the people of God working for him or for her. Amen? That's why genuine people of God, wherever you go, the God who created the heavens and the earth are, is with you. And if God is with you, anything you do, you will be blessed, including your employers. Amen? Let's give God a real applause for that. Amen, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was just uh, impressed by this revelation from the Word of God that the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of this Israelite, Joseph. Hallelujah. And then... Uh, now Joseph was well built and handsome, verse 7 of uh, Genesis 39. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused with me in charge. He told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care, Joseph said. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day in verse 11 of Genesis 39, one day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his clock and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his clock in her hand and he ran out of the house. In the King James Version Bible, he get out of that place and fled. But you know what happened to Joseph? The wife fabricated uh, uh, charges that Joseph tried to, to rape her. That's why Joseph, Joseph was put in prison. But you know what happened? Because Joseph did not complain to God. Because he knew his God. At the right time, Joseph was released from prison. And eventually, Joseph became the number one trusted man of the Pharaoh. And eventually, Joseph became the most powerful man in Egypt second to, par to peril because God fell in love with Joseph. Fear of God. Fear of God shielded Joseph from sin. That's why we have to seriously develop fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Everybody say fear of the Lord. Shields us, Shields us from sin. Number two benefit, I can say, fear of the Lord leads us to obedience to God and loving God passionately. Obedience to God and loving God passionately. Do you recall that Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6, God said, Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, mind, with all your strength. You know, many people claim, many, people, many religious people claim they love God. But if you measure the quantity and quality of their love for God, many love God, but not passionately. There is a great difference between loving God and loving God passionately. 
When you love God passionately, you are ready to pay the highest price of sacrifice just to please Him. Amen? That's why uh, it is so important that uh, we must develop that genuine fear of the Lord so that it will lead us to genuine obedience to God. Remember what the Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. I remember Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. In NIV version, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, God said, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high, high above all nations on earth. Everybody say fully obey. <laughs> Not just obey, but fully obey. Carefully follow, not just follow. It is like uh, an owner of, of a certain house giving instruction to the architect. And the architect contracted a contractor. The contractor must fully obey and carefully follow the architect's plan or the engineer's plan. Or else... Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, the payment or the obligation of the owner of the house or the, uh, could, uh, uh, could not be uh, executed or implemented fully if there is violation. We should learn how to fully obey and carefully follow God. And that is only possible if we develop genuine fear of the Lord. Maraming mga tao binabiolate ang kanilang salita dahil wala silang respeto sa kanilang pinangakuan maging sa Diyos. If we respect God, if we have genuine fear of God, our word is a word of honor. Amen? Kaya ang ganda nitong na inyong slogan, deeply respect, serve, and worship God exclusively when we have absolute loyalty to God many great things will follow amen let's give God a real applause for that amen Lord amen thank you Lord now another good example I would like to mention an ex uh, Abraham as an example you know Genesis chapter 12 when God commanded Abraham Abraham Leave your comfort zone. Leave your country. And then Abraham did not complain. I will bring you to a certain place unknown to you. He did not complain. And in Genesis chapter 22, after waiting for 25 years, and Abraham got his son, or had his son Isaac, after waiting for 25 years. And when Isaac was born, by uh, the legitimate uh, wife of Abraham, uh, Sarah. Then after a few years, God commanded Abraham, bring your son to Mount Moriah and offer him as burnt offering. Imagine that. Did you, is there any uh, opposition on the part of Abraham? Abraham obeyed. And when they were near to uh, Mount Moriah, Isaac was uh, carrying the wood and Abraham was carrying uh, uh, what we call a knife and also uh, fire to burn the wood. And then his son was asking him, Papa, Daddy, Father, where shall we get our, our burnt offering? Abraham did not tell Isaac, you will be the burnt offering. The, Abraham merely said, God will provide. And they, when they reached Mount Moriah, Abraham put in order the wood and then suddenly tied up Isaac and placed over the wood and about to kill his son. But God stop him. Don't kill the lad. You pass the test. 
So God provided another burnt offering through a ram. And God said to Abraham, because you did not withhold your son, because you obeyed me, you passed the test. And I will bless you. And I am making a covenant with you. I will bless you. I will bless your children. I will bless your children's children. I will bless your descendants. And they will multiply like as many as the stars on, on the sky and as sand on the seashore. Because you obeyed me. That's why Abraham was considered by God not as a servant but as a friend. Because of his, I would say, unusual, genuine obedience. And of course, based on the fear of God, reverential fear of Abraham. The lesson here, beloved, let's seriously develop a genuine fear of God. Because fear of God shields us from sins. Fear of God leads us to full obedience to God. And to love God passionately. Amen? Let's give God one more applause. Please. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, another benefit of the fear of the Lord, it leads us to holiness. Let's read Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Everybody say, without holiness, without holiness. no one will see the Lord. Do you, do you recall one more verse concerning the right to see the Lord? In Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. You know, when we have the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord will lead us to holiness. And when we live in holiness, with holiness, hallelujah, we have the uh, privilege to see the Lord. Glory to God. Palakbang natin ang Panginoon. Let's give God a real applause. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And also, of course, uh, if we have the fear of the Lord, it will lead us to worship God in spirit and in truth. In John 4, 4 verse 23 and verse 24, the hour has come that God is looking for men and women, the true worshipers, who should worship the Lord in spirit and truth because God is spirit and those who worship the Lord must worship Him in spirit and truth. Amen? Praise God. Everybody read, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Remember, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And those who worship God truly or truthfully should worship God in spirit and in truth. And in our text, Deuteronomy 6.13, we should only serve God. Exclusively serve Him, meaning we should worship Him, we should serve Him. Do you know one of the subsequent benefits of worshiping and serving God? Remember Exodus 23, verse 25, you shall serve Him. In other translation, you shall worship Him. And because you shall serve him or worship him, I will bless your bread and your water, and I will take away sicknesses from the midst of thee, and no one will be barren in the land. Hallelujah. Imagine that when we are able to worship the Lord, to serve the Lord, because of the foundation of the so-called fear of God in our heart, heaven will be open to us, God will bless your finances, your resources. I will bless your bread and your water, referring to your resources. Hallelujah, kabuhayan. And also, I will take away sicknesses from the midst of thee. I will take away sicknesses from the midst of thee. 
and I, no one will be barren. When I pray for people who could not have a child, I claim that. I, 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 I return to God His promise. Lord, you made a promise that when your people worship you and serve you, you will bless their bread and their water. You will take away sicknesses from the midst of them and no one will be barren among them. You will liberate them from the curse of barrenness. You know, when you pray to God, especially for major things that it takes so many uh, years that you could hardly experience the manifestation of God's answers, learn how to pray the scriptures. The best kind of prayer is praying the promises of God because you're putting God on the defensive. Lord, you made this promise and then you remind God of his promises. That is one of the secrets of effective prayers. Kapag meron kayong mga panalangin hindi nagmamanifest, number one, examine your heart before God. Once you have right standing before God, you don't live in sin and then claim the promises of God. Isaiah 43 verse 26, God said, Put me in remembrance, let us argue together. Of course, there are times that <clears throat> we desire something, but God did not uh, or does not answer us categorically. And that is within the sovereignty of God. That is part of God's discretion. But generally speaking, if we are worshiping and serving God with, with fear of the Lord, with passionate love for God, and then remind God of His promises. Promises. Whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Last but not the least, among the benefits, I want to bring you to Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I remember Dr. Ralph Mahoney many years ago when he went to JIL Arroyo High School. He told me, Brother Eddie, although you are anointed by the Lord, you can be destroyed. You can be destroyed if you don't have wisdom. 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 This is a lesson to all people of God. Anointing is different from, anointing power is different from anointing of wisdom. We should pray for wisdom. That's why I almost pray every day, Lord, release to me your treasury of wisdom. An abundance of knowledge and revelations. Do you remember King Solomon's number one prayer request to God? God told uh, King Solomon, "What do you want? What do you want from me? What do you want to receive from me? What do you want from me?" King Solomon did not ask for money. King Solomon did not ask for wealth. King Solomon did not ask for power. But he merely asked, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. When God released that wisdom to King Solomon, great wealth, riches, and awesome power followed. That's why wisdom is elusive. But wisdom is so important in one's living. If you want to live in, this, in your earthly existence successfully, victoriously, before you enter eternity, you must walk with wisdom of God. And fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have genuine fear of the Lord, you will never, never experience genuine divine wisdom from God. 
Kaya, uh, iwasan natin na tayo'y matukso ng kasalanan. I remember in the last days, in the last days, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 5, let me read from NIV version, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, verse 3 up to verse 5, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. Imagine the God of love, the God who said, love your enemy, said, have nothing to do with them. So in the last days, there's so many temptations, of course. But if we develop genuine fear of the Lord, if we develop genuine fear of the Lord, we are being shielded from all this, or from all kinds of temptations, and Satan will be practically inutile in our existence once the fear of the Lord is solidly developed in our Christian walk. And not only that, this fear of, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, will surely make an impact in our abundant living. Why? Everybody say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. Everybody, let's read. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. Verse 13. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Verse 14, counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. By me, kings reign and rulers make laws that are just. Remember this. It is Wisdom speaking, because God is wisdom. To fi uh, by, uh, by me, princes govern, and all nobles who rule on earth. Verse 17, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me with me. Verse 18, take note of this. Do you want to experience what Jesus said? I came to give life and have it more abundantly. In John chapter 10, verse 10, in verse 18 of Proverbs 8, with me, with wisdom, are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. Let's give God one applause for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So we can see here the importance of wisdom. When you succeed in getting wisdom from the Lord, in your daily life, your entire earthly existence will be worth living. Do you know millions and billions of people exist just for the sake of existence? They grow old and died for nothing. Parang sumingaw lang sila sa mundo. But people, genuine people of God, with wisdom from God, their earthly existence is worth living. When I, when I was out of the country, 
the Lord re-emphasized to me at least two biblical philosophy that I would like to share with you before I close. First, the Holy Spirit reminded me in my devotion that the quality of our life in eternity depends on the quality of our obedience and faithfulness in serving God here on earth. Do you get that? That is one of the precious biblical philosophy that God has put in my heart. That is in addition to some biblical philosophy that the Lord taught me, which is actually biblical. Palakpakan natin ang Diyos na buhay. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would like to emphasize to you, if we want to have that assurance of our quality in serving God with obedience and faithfulness here on earth, the foundational truth must be the full development, the, genuine, the development of genuine fear of the Lord in our heart. Kaya yung mga lalaki, babae, do not give the devil any room. Do not give the devil any room. Pag pinapasok niyo yung daliri ni Satan, papasok yung kamay. Pag pinapasok yung kamay, ipapasok ang kanyang buong authority sa inyo. Do not give the devil any room as the book of Ephesians said. Alam naman niyo yung 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 Galatians Galatians yung Galatians 5:19 to 21. Pwede bang tingnan natin sa dali yon Galatians 5:19 to 21. Anong sabi ron? The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Everybody read. Sex Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Of God, First Corinthians chapter six. Let us see First Corinthians chapter six. Completo hina tin tong ating pag-aaral ng salita ng Dios. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine, verse ten. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually moral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. What will happen to those people who will not inherit the kingdom of God? Let's uh, try to see Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, verse 15, please. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Everybody say lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. It is no joke to be thrown into the lake of fire. The Bible is very clear. It is appointed unto all men to die once and then immediately the judgment. Then the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 a soul driven in hell will remain in hell not only for 100 years, not only for 1,000 years, not only for 1 million years, not only for 1 billion or trillion years, throughout eternity. Throughout eternity. That's why the fear of the Lord is the most important, or I would say the most important message of God to man to people who desire not to miss heaven. Because remember, the second death is in hell. In lake 
of fire, dagat-dagat ang apoy ng impyerno. Kung isang taong napahamak sa apoy ng impyerno, hindi, sana hindi na siya pinanganak. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his own soul to hell forever? Mark chapter 8, verse 36. Kaya napakahalaga na pangalagaan natin ang gift of eternal life. Do you want the gift of eternal life? Yes. You millions of people viewing this television program, do you really want to have uh, the so-called gift of eternal life? You cannot find them in your religion, I'm sorry. You cannot find them in any religion. I respect all religions under the sun. But I have to tell you the truth. Even though you become a member of JIL Church, you still go to hell. If you fail to develop a genuine personal relationship with God through the saving knowledge of Jesus, Jesus who said, He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except by Him. St. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, There is only one God and there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, the begotten Son of God, who incarnated Himself in the very womb of Blessed Mary. He became flesh. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 12. Everybody read. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who does, have, does not have the Son of God does not have life. I'll complete the two biblical philosophies. The first one, the, uh, the quality of our life. The quality of our life in eternity depends on the quality of our obedience and faithfulness in serving God here on earth. Now the second the last biblical philosophy that I would like to share with you, which I received from the Lord a few weeks ago when I was out of the country in my devotion with the Lord, is that the greatest and noblest achievement of a man or a woman here on earth is to be able to know his creator truthfully and personally. And to love him passionately and wholeheartedly. And to serve him faithfully with integrity and excellence until, until he or she stands before him on judgment day. Please take note, the, the Holy Spirit commanded me to receive this from him and share this to humanity. We should, there is no room for us to struggle in this life. We are all tourists in this life. No need to struggle. Live one at a time. Do your best in obeying God's laws, commands, and principles. Never struggle to do what you cannot do. Leave it to God what you cannot do. And your life here on earth will be fruitful and glorifying to Him. Hallelujah. Again, what's that uh, biblical philosophy? Everybody, the greatest and the noblest achievement of a man or a woman in this world is to be able to know His Creator. Truthfully and personally. And love him passionately and wholeheartedly and serve him faithfully with integrity and excellence until, until he or she stands before him on judgment day. Alapakan natin ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody read the slogan. For the last time. If you abide by this slogan based on Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. Your earthly existence in this planet earth 
is worth living and your prominence in eternity is assured. Do you believe that? Now, there is a key so that the fear of the Lord will be fully developed in our existence. By a simple, I just want to share with you a simple message that I learned many years ago from the devotional book of that man. At the age of 43, he died and went with the Lord. But after he died, he became so famous, so famous that all believers of God on the surface of the earth made his most uh, uh, popular uh, devotional book, My Outmost for His Highest, as their, most, as their favorite. And this is Oswald Chamber. I just want to honor Oswald Chamber. I have not. I was not denied, I, I, of course, we, we, we were denied of uh, uh, having a fellowship with him, but during the 18th or 17th century, he lived only for 43 years. But he received so much revelations from the Lord as if like St. Paul. And I just want to read to you before I close so that we can complete this uh, message that God has put in my heart in line or pursuant to your anniversary theme, and that is to deeply respect, serve, worship God exclusively. And the foundation of this is develop the fear of the Lord. And that fear of the Lord can only fully develop once we experience Galatians 2.20. What is Galatians 2.20? St. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the living God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Now, I just want to read to you uh, a very, very short uh, uh, devotional message. The title of this is The Offense of the Natural, from the uh, book of Oswald Chamber. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Galatians 5.24. Just listen to this. Just listen to this. The natural life is not sinful. We must be apostatized from sin, having nothing to do with sin in any shape or form. Sin belongs to hell and the devil. Everybody say sin, sin. belongs to hell and the devil. I, as a child of God, belong to heaven and God. It is not a question of giving up sin, but of giving up my right to myself, my natural independence and self-assertiveness, and this is where the battle has to be fought. It is not the things that are right and noble and good from the natural standpoint that keep us back from God's best. To discern that natural virtues antagonize surrender to God is to bring our soul into the center of its greatest battle. Very few of us debate with the sordid and evil and wrong, but we do debate with the good. We do debate with the good. It is the good that hates the best. And the higher up you get in the scale of the natural virtues, the more intense is the opposition to Jesus Christ. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh. It is going to cost the natural in you everything, not something. Jesus said, if any man will be my disciple, let them deny himself. Take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself of your right to yourself. A man has to realize who Jesus Christ is before he will do it. Listen to this last word. Beware of refusing to go. To the funeral of your own independence. God has billions of people already on the surface of the earth. Christians. Believers of God. 
But you know, you can count on fingers according to some great men, people who have died to themselves. Even the right to themselves, they renounce their right to themselves because they realize they lost their legal right to themselves when they surrender their lives to Jesus. When we surrender our lives to Jesus, we receive Jesus not only as Savior, not only as healer, not only as deliverer, not only as provider, not only as our miracle working God, but when we surrender our life to Jesus, we made Jesus as our Lord, Master, and God. Amen? That's why if we died on ourselves, on, our, on, 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 on ourselves, Jesus lives. That's why St. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of the living God, who loves me and gave himself for me. This is the cost of discipleship. We have to die to ourselves so that Jesus can live. We can attend churches every Sunday. We can attend all services. But if we fail to attain that dimension of Christian living, allowing Jesus just to live and to be the pilot of our lives, to be the driver of our lives, our Christianity is still in vain. Shall we stand, please? Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Let's honor and respect and deeply love and worship the Lord by singing this song prayerfully. Let us raise up our hands. Lord, with all my heart, I worship. Hallelujah. All that is within me, those who cannot read it, I give you praise. All that I adore is. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Yes, every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way. Father God in heaven, thank you, Father God, for your amazing grace, for your abundant mercies, for your infinite love that you commended your love for us. You demonstrated your love for us that when we were yet sinners, 
Christ Jesus, your begotten Son, became flesh and died for our sins. Lord, we acknowledge the supreme sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. He knew no sin but was made sin for us so that we can be made as your righteousness in Christ Jesus. He knew no sickness but he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. He was so rich yet became so poor when he became flesh so that through his poverty we can be rich thank you lord for your revelation in john chapter 10 verse 10 that the lord jesus christ came to give life and have it more abundantly why the thief cometh but to steal to kill and to destroy john 10 10 thank you lord truly for your word in first john 3 8 that the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Lord, here we are. We are offering our life. We are dedicating our life to you. Because you love us first. And we love you too. Raise up your hands, please. Let us rededicate our life right now. Yes, this King of kings and Lord of lords, the begotten Son of the living God. Hallelujah is just standing beside you. You can talk to him. You can dedicate and rededicate your life to Him. Yes, Lord Jesus, we recognize your presence in our midst right now. You are not limited by distance, space, and even time. Even those who are viewing this television program, you can touch them. You can embrace them with your love. Yes, Lord. Listen to their individual prayer. Yes, Lord. Whatever sins that you can see in the life of each and every one of us, have mercy on us. Forgive me, forgive us for any kind of sin, iniquity, transgression, negligences, shortcomings, imperfections, and weaknesses. We confess them all to you. Yes, Lord. Listen to the confession of your people. Yes, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive your people. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Shed in Calvary. Purify our heart, Lord. For you said, Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand on the holy ground of the holy God? Only those with clean hands and with a pure heart. Psalm 24, verse 3 and verse 4. Sanctify our lives, Lord. And now, Lord, we rededicate our life to you. We rededicate our life to you. We truly surrender our life to you. Come into our heart. Come into the heart of your people. Not just to be Savior. Not just to be healer. Not just to be deliverer. Not just to be provider. But be their Lord, Master, and God. Fill your people with the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Fill your people with the fullness of your holiness and righteousness. Fill your, your people, Lord, with wisdom and love. Love and wisdom. And now, Lord, lay your hands upon everyone and release literally the new anointing power of the Holy Ghost. Release literally, Lord, the fullness of the Holy Spirit upon your people. Oh, you will receive power, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit is coming to you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and throughout the othermost part of the earth. Oh, people of God, after receiving Jesus, receive now the gift of the Holy Spirit. Receive the fullness of the anointing power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing that destroys the yoke of the devil, the works of the devil, the wiles of the devil. Receive, receive, receive that anointing power of the Holy Spirit that destroys the works of the devil in your lives. Yes, sicknesses and diseases are being destroyed. Even poverty, yes, in Jesus' name. Receive, receive all heavenly blessings. Believe that there is now an open heaven over you. Oh, glory, glory be to God. 
Yes, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for releasing the new anointing power of the Holy Ghost upon your people. The Lord is impressing upon my heart right now because you welcome the Spirit of the Lord. God is pouring out His love unto your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. God is pouring out His love into your heart. The agape love, the divine love, yes. Amen, Lord. Lord, continue to pour out the love, your love, unto the heart of your people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, that is the foundation of the fear of the Lord. That is the foundation of the fear of the Lord. Now receive the fullness of that spirit of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, receive, receive the spirit of love of God, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and receive that anointing of wisdom, wisdom, wisdom is now being released unto you. Welcome the anointing of wisdom. Welcome the anointing of wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the foundation of victories and success in this earthly living. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Raise up your hands, please. And everybody say to Jesus, to the Father and to the Holy Ghost, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. I receive now, I receive now your, agape your agape love in my heart, in my heart. By, the power of your Holy Spirit. by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I receive, and I receive that, is, that, is spirit that spirit of the fear of the Lord, of the, fear of the, Lord. the beginning of wisdom. I receive at the same time, I at the, same time the, anointing of the anointing of wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. I receive the new anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Now I am more than conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me. I receive now the fullness of life. I receive all heavenly blessings. I receive for me and my family even for my finances. All, all, all the benefits of Calvary. From now on, I will deeply respect, love and serve, and worship the Almighty God exclusively. For God's glory alone. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Kung kayo ay napagpala sa programang inyong napanood, you can partner with us by sending your donations to Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated. Bank details. Bank of the Philippine Islands. Account name, Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated. Account number, 0040310064401. Swift code, BOPIPHMM, Manila, Philippines. China Bank Incorporation. Account name, Light TV Ministries Foundation Incorporated. Account number, 1025-00001426 Swift Code CHBKPHMM Manila, Philippines Thank you for partnering with Light TV, God's channel of blessings.